Hi, in this video you'll learn about a normal random variable. We'll be determining the probability of a normal random variable using the cumulative standard normal distribution table. And here's the problem I've chosen. Uh, the diameter of a shaft X in an optical storage drive is normally distributed with a mean of 0 0.2508 inches and a standard deviation of 0 0.0005 inches. So we know X, uh, the diameter of these shafts, is normally distributed, and I went ahead and drew in the probability density function of a normal random variable with a mean of 0 0.2508 inches. So that's where the bell of the curve is, 2505678. This is the mean of this random variable with a standard deviation of 0 0.0005 inches. And the standard deviation on a normal curve det determines really the spread of that normal random variable. Okay. There are specifications given on the diameter of this shaft. Uh, they are 0 0.2500 inches plus or minus 0 0.0015 inches. So for a diameter of a shaft, its diameter to meet specifications must be between uh, the upper specification limit. So if I take 0.25 inches plus or minus 0 0.0015 inches, I get the upper specification limit. So I'll just, in shorthand notation, upper specification limit. Now if I take 20.25 inches and subtract off 0 0.0015, I get here my lower specification as 0 0.2485, and this is the lower specification. So shafts that are between the lower and the upper specification, um, they're going to conform. But the ones here, um, the ones with diameters beyond 0 0.2515 are, are too large, and so these shafts are not going to conform. Their diameters are too large. So um, you can think of it like right here, this is the non-conforming region, and in between these two bounds is the conforming region. So we're asked to find what proportion of shafts conform to specification. So what proportion of shafts are between the lower and upper specification region? Uh, limit. So let's go ahead um, and turn this into a probability problem. So we're trying to find the probability that X is between the lower specification limit, 0 0.2485, and the upper specification limit of 0 0.2515. Now, in order to determine this probability, I'm going to convert these values and the random variable to a standard normal random variable. So we usually reserve the letter Z for a standard normal random variable. So let me just write here, this is a standard normal. And we actually have a table to find areas under the curve of a standard normal. Now, a standard normal, I should be more specific, um, is a normal random variable with a mu of 0, a mean of 0, and a standard deviation of 1. And so what a table does, it helps us find probabilities under a standard normal curve. So if we can convert to a standard normal, then we can just use the table to compute probabilities. So that's my goal here. I'm going to convert um, these values to standard normal values. Now in order to do this, I follow this procedure. I take, um, I take the value, I subtract off its mean, which is 0.2508 and I divide by its standard deviation. So I'm going to do that to all values. Now, when I take x, subtract off its mean, divide by its standard deviation, it becomes a standard normal. So I replace the random variable x with z. So I'm reminding myself these are standard normal values. And when I go to compute probabilities, I'll go to the cumulative standard normal table. So I'm going to go ahead and convert the upper specification limit, 2515 minus 0.2508 divided by 0.0005. Okay, so the z-scores, once we evaluate them, negative 4.6 less than z less than 1.4. So uh, right before I determine these, let's go ahead and uh, write this as one other statement. That's the probability that z is going to be less than 1.4. So I want the area to the left of 1.4, and I'm going to subtract off the area to the left of negative 4.6. Okay, so to compute these values, then I'm going to go to the cumulative standard normal table. So let me show you that. I went ahead and uh, 
and paste it into the next two slides. So uh, here's the negative values for the standard normal table. And uh, this shows you in the table, the table finds the area under the curve up to the value z. So the table is giving you z values, and inside the table are probability values. So let's an example, let's pick out uh, the, the, the value, let's find the, the area to the left of z equals negative 2 point, uh, let's say 63. So I go on my t on the uh, down to the uh, first column, and I see negative 2.6. So this is the ones and the tenths, and then I go to 0 0.03. That's here. That's the hundredths unit, and I come down, and this tells me how much area is to the left of negative 2.63. So if you imagine, if we could just shove in here negative 2.63. Um, that's the little bit of area it has to the left, the area under the curve up till z. So the probability we were trying to find is probability z less than 1.4. So here's the z values for the positive values. Here's 1.4. And I did cut off this table to fit on the slide, so it does continue further, but you're only seeing up to 1.6. But here's 1.4. And then the hunter's place was zero. So this is the amount of area uh, under the, that normal curve up to point nine, or up to point one four is point nine one nine two four three. So imagine again, this is the value one point four. This is how much area is to the left of it. Okay, so let me just write that in. Uh, 0 0.919243. That's the area under the curve up to 1.4. So let's go back and write that into our problem. Okay, so this is equal to 0 0.919243. Okay, minus the area under the curve up to negative 4.6. And you could probably see the first when we looked at that uh, of the negative values, there's not a whole lot of area past negative 3.99. It, 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 there just isn't. So imagine if this is, if this is the end, even at negative 4, and we go out even further, there, there's just a negligible amount of area. They're very, very tiny. So we can practically say once we're past, let's say, negative 4 standard deviations, there, there's almost nothing there. So going back... Um, you can see here, so uh, the amount of area or probability to the left of negative 4.6, we're going to say is zero. So the proportion of shafts conforming to specifications is 92, or sorry, 919243. So this is uh, the proportion there. So just as a recap, uh, what we had was a normal curve with a mean and a standard deviation. We are trying to find a proportion of x values that lie between the upper and lower specification limits that we were given. Uh, to do this, we used a cumulative standard normal table. And to be able to use it, we had to convert our values to standard normal values. And again, the standard normal random variable is usually denoted by z, and that's why I switched to z here. So then it was just a matter of trying to find the probability that a standard normal was between negative 4.6 and 1.4 units. So we went to the standard normal table, we read it, and we got our probabilities. So that's the end of this video. And uh, I think, again, that normal table is very, very handy for computing normal probabilities as long as you, again, do the conversion to a standard normal. So this is a very typical way that we solve for probabilities when we have normal random variables. So I hope this helps, and uh, we'll talk again soon.